Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest on the Gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And as I think about the guests I've had, I always kind of think back, now, how did I meet this young man anyway? And where did I meet him? And I bet you I met Terry 10 or so years ago. It's been a while. And uh, he was also the creator of my first uh, website, which I'll be eternally grateful for. A uh, very dynamic, talented man in the video world and so on and so forth, Terry Simpson. Terry, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you, David. Glad to be here. Good you to bet. see you. Good to see you. Glad to have you here as well. So as the purpose of this has been to really kind of help people that maybe don't think as far outside the box, or maybe not have as much creativity around what's happening now and what they can do. So let me start you off with this question. What has been your best coping mechanism to kind of handle this pandemic? We're six or seven weeks into it now. It's, it's been kind of crazy, unprecedented. But what's been the thing that's maybe helped you get through it the best? You know, honestly, I think Zoom is. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I honestly think that reaching out and it's, it's, it's an interesting thing because it's, um, it's quick. It's av mm -hmm. available. I mean, it doesn't take all the time that it takes to get a group of people together to have a drink or dinner or whatever, you know, it's, True. it's just like, Oh, we can do this pretty quickly. And I think that and walks, I think getting outside for walks is good, which, which as far as I know, that's, legit here but um, yeah yeah you know oh, that's good and it's, it's funny because zoom and one of the things i did a, a video about the top 10 gratitude perspectives on the coronavirus and i put zoom in there and the technology and uh, gosh family dinners are coming back it was it was really cool there's a lot of a lot of silver linings through something that some people think is totally negative but no so as as the gratitude guy what i talk about more than anything else is being grateful and focusing on what you have versus what you don't have have you noticed since you and Gene and you went into this in particular, have what you're grateful for, has what you're grateful for changed? Is it the same? Did it change as you got into this over these last six or seven weeks? You know, I, I think it's crystallized. I, I don't think it's changed. I think, mm. I think I've always been very grateful for my wife, for my two kids, for our animals, for our house, for uh, this privileged place that we have. But this really, really has focused on that you know you it, it's i mean i guess i feel humbled mm, uh it, it, the this stuff makes me feel humbled by uh the sacrifices that some people are making the, that the uh, the frontline you know uh, nurses doctors people who are putting themselves at risk mm -hmm. um and and i feel like whatever little things that i do are uh just pale and it makes me more and more grateful for what I have. You know, wow. uh, it makes me, I have a niece who's actually a, a nurse in Boston. Oh, wow. Uh, and she's right in the middle of it. And I, and, 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 you know, now we have the privilege of having so much on television. True. Uh, I mean, it's just all right there. And, and it's like Vietnam, the Vietnam war in the, in the seventies. Now we're seeing, close up and personal this war we're seeing people who are just uh you know in a war zone in a, in a pandemic and we're seeing what they're going through and we're seeing um the uh the, the really um the great links that people are going to just to keep other humans alive and then contact and stuff and so That's so no, go ahead yeah, it just, uh, it, like I say, humbling is, is the first word that pops in my head, and I think it, it, it's the last. It's no, that's just, good, and that's a great point you just brought up. You know, when you think about, um, you and I aren't that far apart in age, but if you think back about uh, Vietnam, maybe in particular, we saw it, and you saw films of World War One and Two, but, but Vietnam is where it really became right. People, you know, reporters embedded in the war and so forth. But, but you're right. I hadn't thought about this. It's one of the reasons I enjoy doing these uh, interview pod, uh, podcast interviews so much regarding this is because you're seeing it in the front line as you're living it and these people are going through it. There was just that unfortunate uh, young lady the other day that there was an emergency room doctor that took her own life who has been so stressed out by this. And so to see it up front, it really does humble you and it makes you appreciate uh, uh, just the people because you can see it firsthand which is uh, which is really true so so well and what, and what i'm humbled by partially too sorry to interrupt you no but, no please but I, i'm humbled by all i'm being asked to do is wear a mask and mm -hmm. 
stay inside with the people I love. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. I, 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 we're not really to the sacrifice yet. And may, maybe it's yeah. going to get that way, but I'm hoping that the appreciation that's coming up in this is, is going to inform us and carry us into the next phase, which could be uh, a lot more stressful. So Sure, sure. No, that's it. And again, the reason I'm just so enjoying these is I actually had somebody say, I'm enjoying the quarantine. I've gotten to know my family better and family dinner and those types of things. So there are quite a few silver linings that come through it. And, and if I think about you, it's hard for me to think about you without Gene, but I think about you and Gene and the boys. And what would you say as sort of a tip, or you mentioned the exercise thing, which was really good, of course, but maybe a tip or a thought or an idea for somebody, how they can make use of this time, uh, because you've always had a lot of balls in the air, and just maybe some of the things that they can be doing, whether they're, they're housebound in their house or condo or apartment. <laughs> You're asking me to be an advice guy, huh? <laughs> That's a careful door to open. That's a, you better be cautious about that. Uh, oh, God. I'm a consultant, remember? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> As are you. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think, well, I'm guessing keeping a daily routine is probably something that's really oh, that's good. good and, you know, we've fallen into a pretty good one. And I started this thing. I, I actually was doing more work uh, for clients getting video streaming services going. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was doing a bunch of 12-hour days and oh, stuff. Wow. And, and coming home and not knowing. And so going, you know, and if I can relate it all to people who are uh, – in hospitals and other situations, it's like the entry and exit from one environment to another is extremely oh, important, you right. know, so that if you do have to go somewhere um, that you, I mean, basically I'd go in the kind of the back door and into the bathroom and shower right away and change into different clothes. And it's kind of, it's kind of what, you know, doctors and nurses and stuff do. You just want to make sure that you don't you don't bring anything home, but that right. wasn't the kind of tips or advice you were looking <laughs> no, for. But no, I'm just that. saying that it <laughs> makes you appreciate transitions. You know, sure. I think, I think if you can appreciate uh, and, and maybe it's enjoy, but do what you're doing. It's just like washing your hands, mm -hmm. you know, washing your hands for 30 seconds is like being very careful that you do the nails in the middle of the palm and yep. you do thumbs and all those things that they've taught us to do now maybe that's a that's that, that's a micro macro kind of thing of like yeah mm -hmm. paying attention to um lots of more things that you do rather than just kind of floating through well and when i mentioned tips that people have brought up on these uh, podcasts is that somebody said everybody says this is a once in a lifetime thing it's the biggest thing that's happened in my life and uh yours and so on but the guy made a great point he says don't think it's going to be another hundred years this could happen another two or three years somehow now and another virus with no vaccine or no uh, cure from north korea or china or something and his point was hopefully people have learned from this whether it's saving money or being a little more conservative or being ready for taps again so there's a lot of great lessons that are going to come out of this of something that is seemingly so uh worldwide and so forth and and, and speaking of which, with, again, knowing you, Terry, pretty well, is there anything that you've thought of that, um, boy, once this is over, whether it's the vaccine or we're not going to shelter in place, or, that you're going to, I don't know, I'd say maybe hit the ground running, come out, and I'm going to do this a little differently after this is done, as you've had this time to think about it? Well, I, I you know, when you're, when you're talking about that, I don't know if this answers your question at all, but. I think travel is a very precious thing, mm. you know, and, and it's a becoming very appreciative of the ability to travel to yeah. another place and look at another culture, whether it's 50 miles from here or 500 miles from here or 5,000 miles. That's a great here. point. You know, it's really, um, and figuring out how to do that and not, well, I mean, for one thing, it's, it's going to change a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the modes of travel, approaches to travel. Uh, but also just the appreciation of it. It's like, okay, what is it? Why is it that I've really decided to do this to, you know, it, it sort of raises the stakes maybe on, right. on, on, you want to get more out of the experience, I think. And maybe that's true of every experience, you know, it's like even just leaving the house and going for a walk to right. the park. It's like, 
oh man, look at the sky, look at the beautiful sky and the sun and the, the leaves and the way the flowers are and stuff. You just, you want to appreciate every what a, transition. What a, great, what a great point. I think that they always say you can't appreciate up until you've seen down. But see, again, why I like doing this so much, but you mentioned the travel thing and, and travel had become so second nature. It was like, it's like taking a Greyhound bus, just, you know, down the next time we hop a plane and I'll go down to, to yeah. Atlanta or wherever it might be or California. And um, we, you and I have talked about when you're traveling to see the folks or your parents and um, gosh, you really appreciate all these planes are empty now and so on. But just, again, you just don't appreciate something until it's taken away. And so yeah. that's that and travel. That's a really good one too. So well, that's good. So, so last question is, do you have sort of what I would call a, a quote or sometimes people will say out of the Bible or something that represents sort of a philosophy that you have about life that has always kind of sustained you, that you, you sort of use it. This is my mantra that takes me through life and then maybe through a tough time like this that I lean back on that and think, gosh, I've always believed uh, such and such that kind of directs you uh, during a time like this at all. Wish I did have something right off the tongue, but you know, when you're talking, I'm just sitting there going, "Yep, yeah, pay attention." Yeah, that's kind of a that's a good one. Pay attention. You yeah, know, be present. Be present. Be, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Another way uh, of saying be, be here now. Or you and know, some people present. said to this too shall pass. A number of people have yeah. said that too, which I like. And that depends if a person is religiously uh, oriented or not. Yeah. But I just think sometimes it's nice because it's it's during the tough times you can kind of. Uh, fall back, I think, sometimes on things. And it's certainly like you and I go back literally a decade or whatever it's been and uh, or more. And it's just, uh, it's just nice to, there's some things, you, you know, you can always count on. Well, I, you know, there's, there's one thing I would, one big thing that I would say in, has informed me for my life. Uh, and it came out of uh, being born in a hurricane area. Oh, wow. Uh, and our, our house was not leveled, but it was pretty much you know, um, full of water, three wow. feet of water and six inches of mud. Wow. Uh, and the whole town was like that. And uh, my mother wrote up this story because she and my dad came back to, to uh, restore the house, you know, before we did. They, they, they spent six weeks just trying to get the house to where we could move into it. Wow. Uh, and she, she wrote up this story of it. Of, uh, it was a small enough town on the Gulf Coast of Texas that there were two merchants two businessmen, two, two supermarkets, you know, early supermarkets, you know, probably like a small Safeway these days. Mm -hmm. But there were two of them, only two in town. And, and in that immediate aftermath of the hurricane, one of the uh, merchants did what somebody should do, perhaps, is he looked at his stock, he looked at what he had left, what had gotten wiped out, what was still there, and he marked up the prices on all the stuff that was still on the shelves, and he charged a couple bucks a bottle for water. He, you know, he really was trying to make his money because he was afraid of going bankrupt right. because of this disaster. Well, the other guy, it's hard for me to tell this story, but the other guy mm -hmm. basically uh, took a different path. And he looked around and he said, I don't have anything left. You mm -hmm. know, what I have left, he just opened up his doors and he said, come get it. Wow. So the, the, the coda of the, of the story is a year later, the first guy was out of business. The second guy was thriving. Wow. And I think wow. that, I think that story to me has always been, the sense of humanity mm -hmm. uh, and Good caring point. and taking care of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Great story. Great story. Yeah. Great lessons. I think that's why, I, use, I keep using the word silver linings, but I think there's just a lot of good that'll come out of this. And so we're seeing it and that's a great story. So, well, listen, tremendous story to wrap it up with. Thank you so much, Terry. That was tremendous. And just as I knew, I would get some prime nuggets from Mr. Terry Simpson. Thank you so much for being part of the podcast. Thanks, David. Thanks for doing this. You bet.